Welcome back. You're watching the home of a whole story. This is KTN News and this is a news center where I'm holding court with Dan Shikanda, the chairman of AFC Lopez. We're slicing and dicing what is happening with the football fraternity here in the country, looking at the sorry state of affairs with uh, the current state of play. We have a caretaker committee right now who actually they're running the affairs of football here in the country. So when did the rain start beating us? Dan, back to you. We want to talk about also self-interest. Maybe Nick has been self-serving himself at the expense of FKF, especially when it comes to selling of players as well, so to speak, to you know, other big clubs in the country, uh, outside the country, I should say. And most of the youthful players being channeled to, you know, Karibangi Sharks. Would you just kindly tell us what was happening with that particular scenario and how was he using the, his office to try and game the system? Yeah, uh, it's a very sorry state uh, when there's conflict of interest and uh, you are the head of uh, an institution. It will definitely not uh, go down well, both, as a prof uh, both professionally and maybe I can say uh, even uh, in ways that you can actually help the youthful players. Mm -hmm. We have seen a scenario whereby uh, a lot of uprising, key promising youthful players are moved towards one direction. And at the end of the day, once they go there, you find that uh, the dynamics of any organization, of any institution, you find that they will struggle a lot when they're down there with maybe a small team like Karyobagi Sharks, uh, not with any due respect to them, because there are big guns in this country who, if these youthful players could have come to them, mm -hmm. definitely there could be a lot of uh, change in their direction of how their career progresses. Yes. We have seen youths being cheated that, uh, or being told, mm -hmm. if you come this direction, you will be called to the under 23, you will be called to the national team. And they disregard each and everything and go there. So you find yourself with so many talent, so much talent, uh, at the expense of other teams, and then you start saying that uh, you, you actually lose focus on these players. There's this business of selling players uh, outside this country. And for a player to go outside the country, mostly those European countries look at collapse, look at how many collapse you, you, you've had in the national team. Yes. It's absurd when you tell me that uh, FC and Gormai, we lack talent uh, and we lack uh, members, players in the national team. You call two goalkeepers from one team, Goalkeeper one, goalkeeper two. To take them to the Cup of Nations. And those two goalkeepers are not, in fact, the ones who kept the most clean sheets. No. Mm -hmm. So it just tells you clearly. Meritocracy is not there. There the, are the, 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 the other vested interests. Okay. And this is actually what has been killing our football. This is actually what has been making our football not grow. We need to be fair. Football is all about fairness. Mm -hmm. Fair play. Let if goalkeeper Saruni of Ulinzi has kept the most clean sheets. Mm -hmm. That tells you, that, uh, it tells you uh, he is the best goalkeeper. Let him go to the national team. If Wanga is the topmost scorer mm -hmm. in the national team, there's no way you'll drop him at an expense of a player you are telling us, this is a youthful player, we want him to go and have the experience. We are not going to get experience from the Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. We are going to play. We are not going just to participate to give some players uh, experience, yeah. experience. We are going to, we are taking our best to make sure we get results so that our, uh, our country can be somewhere on the map. So we dropped Alan Wanga as our top scorer to get some names or some players simply because they went the Karyobangi way. No, mm -hmm. that is wrong. And I, we, 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 we condemned that and we will still condemn that because that is how we kill our football. It's not ju just about the money. Money is critical for football management and running of these teams. But there are things which this federation has killed that has actually buried our football. So it seems uh, morale is uh, at an all-time low well, within these particular clubs because of the, the management that we are experiencing right now, if this is what is really happening. But aside from that, let me just ask you, do you think then uh, the FKF has generated more revenue, has lost more money during the tenure of Nick Mwendwa 
uh, as opposed to other years, other tenors that we've had before. It seems uh, people are greatly shy to associate with FKF, even from the betting clubs, as, as it were, uh, because of the management that is uh, under Nick Mandwa. Yes, I can say that, that one for free. I have been at the helm of FC Leopards, and for the last two years, I've been trying to get corporate sponsorship uh, to come and, uh, and sponsor FC Leopards. Yes. Unfortunately, I have, if you come, uh, if you look at my laptop, we have almost 40, 40 proposals, which are actually just at the brink of saying yes or no, but when they look at our football leadership, mm. when they look at what has been happening, you find somebody, at the moment, I don't want to go into this murky water of football. L give me some time. Mm -hmm. We have lost quite a number of those uh, would-be partners. And I can say, if we opened up our football, and uh, I, I have reached a stage where I, s I told myself, yes. I will not kill myself with corporate sponsorship, because mm -hmm. there's still a lot to be done yes. uh, for for corporates to start looking at football as an industry, not just as, um, as, past, um, as pastime. We have lost so much goodwill under uh, the past federation because it has been a unilateral decision maker by somebody sitting somewhere and deciding this is the best for me. Because for anyone to come and sponsor football in this country, they'll definitely ask people, mm -hmm. How do you, what do you think? Can I put my 60 million into FC? into Gormaya, into the league, and they will definitely get answers. Yes. No, don't put because of A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. And for us to get corporate sponsorship and get the government fully backing us, we have to put our houses in order. Yes. You, 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 we have to be honest, and this one I want to be honest with our members, with stakeholders of football. The Federation has openly been fighting FC and Gormaya. The problems we are going through the FIFA issues has been the federation because you deny us our money. You let our players suffer because we cannot pay. For example, federation now owes FC Leopards 3.3 million. From April, we have been their flag bearer uh, in uh, the matches they've been showing, but they have not been paying us. So how do you expect Dan Shikanda to pay players and yet you are not giving us our money? We, there are deals that the federation signs on our behalf, which we are supposed to be part and party of them, but we don't see them. At the end of the day, you find that, yes, the buck stops with us, uh, the clubs, or for maybe running our clubs in, in, in a prudent manner, in a way that we can attract also sponsorship. But if the environment is not conducive, I can tell you, you will not attract any sponsorship. But Dan, let, let me ask you, you know, also we can just sit here and... Uh, Billy Ake raise accusatory fingers, but also within these particular clubs, AFC Lopez and Gore Meyer. Well, we can say that oh, even you, you're squeaky clean. You're not having all that hello, you know, shimmering and shining on your head uh, as well. Why is FKF also on your case? Maybe because, first of all, of your mismanagement of this particular funds that comes from <laughs> FKF in the first place. So you've not been squeaky clean as well from, from the beginning in running the affairs of these, you know, clubs as well. I can tell you for free. And I'll talk on behalf of AFC Leopards. Any monies we've been given. For example, uh, Sports Pesa, when it was there, it used to give AFC Leopards 57 million. And at that time, there was get collection. So AFC was making about 70 million because get collection, you can say, maybe 10 to 13 million. 70 million to run AFC Leopards at that time. When we came in, the sponsor left. We ran AFC Leopards for the first season without sponsorship. And we played 27 league matches mm -hmm. and, uh, and four cup matches without any sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Come second year, I got sponsorship of 40 million. Remember, if the 57 million plus get collection was not enough to run the club, what is 40 million? It is definitely not enough. Then come the third year, this year, yes. I am running AFC Leopards at half the budget that we started with BetSafe, because we are actually being given 1.6 million per month. Mm -hmm. My salary cap, my salary uh, for the players uh, is about 3.7 million mm -hmm. per month. So when I'm getting 1.6 million, it tells you 
I have to uh, top up mm -hmm. to reach the 3.7 million to pay salaries. The federation is supposed to be giving me money monthly. It was supposed to be giving us 800,000 monthly. But since April, they stopped. They stopped giving us money. Up to the other day is when they gave us 300,000 after they, they suspended us. For example, when they suspended us, why did the federation suspend us? The federation suspended, uh, suspended us because we refused to honor a match between AFC and Golmaya. And the reason being, somebody was being used to tell our players that mm. the money we were to be given after playing the final of the, Bets, uh, the Betway Cup, yes. the one million which was due to AFC and the two million which was due to Golmaya, had been given to the club officials which was not the truth. Mm -hmm. And the players were actually planning to boycott the mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. and embarrass the leadership of AFC and Gormaya. So we talked to our players and we told them, the federation has not given us this money. That was one month down the line. Mm -hmm. And we told the players, we have even contacted the sponsor who says he has given the money. But the money has not been given to the clubs. So we told them, instead of boycotting the match, yes. Let us, as the leadership of AFC and Gormaya, let us jointly write to the Federation and tell the Federation, we are not going to honor this match because mm -hmm. you, you are saying you have given us the money and you have not given us. So if you have given us the money, we will honor the match as leadership of these clubs. But if you have not given us the money, we will not parade our teams to honor this match. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So when we didn't honor the match, that is when the players realized the Federation was lying. It, has not, it had not given us the money one month down the line. Mm -hmm. So instead of now us sitting down and sorting that, the Federation comes up, suspends us indefinitely, and uh, finds FC six million and Gormaya four million. So if that match can generate six million, mm -hmm. and you've been giving us 200,000 uh, 200, per match yes. when, you, when you broadcast our matches, mm -hmm. Which means you've been stealing from us because these clubs can only grow if the revenues that they generate, they are given. Mm -hmm. But if you're not giving us our rightful revenue that we generate, how are we going to grow this market, right, uh, but, these clubs? Dan, considering also that we've been living in COVID times with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic around us as well, economy has been tanking, things have been contracting as far as finances is concerned. Could that also be a good valid reason that yes, money has not been flowing to the clubs. Football was not played anywhere in the world because of COVID-19 pandemic. No, this is not an exception. That well. is not a valid reason because uh, on this case of the Federation with us, the sponsor gave the money on time. For example, Betkin and Statems, they tell us, we remit your money, but we, we haven't been getting the money. And it became very difficult, as you say, mm -hmm. in these tough economic times, uh, where COVID has been ravaging uh, all over. Yes. It was even hard for us to run these clubs because we are not getting the money that we are entitled to. Remember, the, the, the money we are getting from the betting companies is not get collections. It is money they, 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 uh, they are giving for us to showcase, to market their product. We have actually played. The Federation showed 86% of our matches. We are the team, they showed the most matches. But I am disappointed to tell you, we got the least amount of monies. Teams like Western Steamer, mm -hmm. whose the federation showed, I think, less than six or seven of their matches, got more money than AFC Leopards. Yeah? Where you showed almost all our matches, apart from five, five or six. But the scenario was, when Dan Shikanda asks for the money we are rightful due to, I am told I'm fighting the Federation. Exactly the same thing they were trying to do to the CS, mm -hmm. sponsor some uh, keyboard warriors to fight the, 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 the minister, mm -hmm. the, 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 the CS in social media, has been done to me, has been done to Rachel. Why? Because we are asking for our money. So if you are given our money in April, how come by September, you have not remitted the money. Is that good governance? Is that proper management of finances in your league? And we are the best brand of your league because why are you showing our matches day in, day out? We are not gaining from you broadcasting our matches. For example, 
we have written to the we have written to Star Times now, and we've told them clearly, mm -hmm. we will not honor these matches we are playing at one, because now mm -hmm. the government has opened the stadiums, fans will be coming in. We want to play at four so that we can get some little money from get collections. Mm -hmm. So when you tell me to play on Friday at one. And then at the end of the day, I'm not gaining anything. You as the federation, you are gaining. You have a sponsor mm -hmm. who wants, who is broadcasting the matches. The sponsor who is broadcasting the matches, he is gaining. But me as AFC Leopards, I'm gaining zero because I'm not getting that money. Mm. So we cannot hide under COVID. Yes, COVID has been there. But this federation will not hide under COVID in, uh, in regards to the money that the sponsors were actually giving them to give to the teams. All right. So what was that also? You mentioned uh, start times. So, and I remember there was a contentious uh, a deal with the FKF where most of the clubs, I don't know if you were included, we had uh, uh, Gormaya, we had Lindsay who felt they were shortchanged with this particular deal. Uh, something was not very clean with that particular broadcasting uh, deal with uh, start times as well. Right? Are you privy to this information? What really happened now that you're actually mentioning them? Uh, was that resolved? Yes, I'm privy to this information. Yes. And uh, maybe today I'll let the cut out of the bag. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very unfortunate because uh, as chairman of AFC, first and foremost, I didn't sign that thing. It was signed a long time ago. For AFC, I don't know. It was signed a long time ago. It was just brought on the table. FC has signed. Uh, and when you, I started you did not, words, uh, Hold on, you did not append your signature on it? I did not append my signature So what, was this a forgery? It was not a forgery. Uh -huh. You see, in a leadership, like for example in AFC Leopards, we have the chairman, the treasurer, and the, yes. the chairman, the secretary, and the treasurer in that picking order. Mm -hmm. Somebody took advantage. Mm -hmm. I was sick, isolated somewhere with COVID, mm. and I was told AFC Leopards had signed. But I realized... By the way, we didn't, read all the, we didn't read these things. And that's why I'm saying that was poor governance in terms of you are setting people against each other. Mm -hmm. If I stood up and said, FC has not signed this, FC has not done this, mm -hmm. I could have opened a Pandora, mm. or a, 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 a can of worms, which was difficult with the prevailing circumstances that we were going through as a club at that time. Mm -hmm. What I decided to do, now that this thing was out, FC was a key player in those decision making. Key player. And it was unfortunate. My colleagues felt we had let them down. Mm. But I told myself, there will be no two leagues. I will do whatever dip dip diplomatic skills I have mm. to have one league. And I thought the federation will actually thank me yes. for having one league. Mm -hmm. And I had to talk to my colleagues who are on the other side, who had refused to sign, and tell them, let us have one league. Let us not sign this. And even I, I talked to the federation. It mm -hmm. was important for us to start playing football. Now that the government has opened, we play, and we play under one umbrella. I will bring the rest on the table. I remember when I was negotiating with the rest, Yes. the CEO called me and told me, Shikanda tunasikia umetusaliti umenda kuongea na wale. I told him no. As an elder and as somebody who has been in football, we have to play one league. Mm. And I thank God it came to pass. We all came under one umbrella. Gormaya, Ulinzi, uh, Madara United, and um, Zuccherito yes. had reservations, which we agreed, yeah, because of the reservations they have, uh, let us see how to go forward. Remember, Rachel also didn't sign. It mm. is the secretary who signed. So we realized what was, being, what was happening, but we focused on the bigger picture. The bigger picture was, can we put our house in order? We play one league, we try and attract corporate sponsorship so that we can move forward as a country, as a, um, as a footballing nation, mm -hmm. because it was affecting everyone. And I didn't want a scenario whereby we get all messed up in these murky waters mm -hmm. of who is not playing, who was signed, who was not signed. But honestly speaking, it was very wrong to um, twist clubs to sign those deals, which up to date, mm -hmm. I wonder and I think a lot of clubs have not seen those contracts of Bet King, those contracts of uh, Star Times. It's mm -hmm. very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. It, it appears to me that the issue of corporate governance is not running, you know, athwart 
when it comes to football fraternity here in the country. We are not seeing that being exercised. I think that will also bring a sense of an modicum of organization and sobriety in running the affairs of football here in the country that is woefully inadequate within this particular clubs uh, and the federation. I can tell you, uh, I wouldn't want to talk about other federations. I would just like to focus on football. It's an opportunity, maybe... Yes, yes. Football, this is what we are particularly intent on. And I'm talking about the corporate governance that should be streamlined within, you know, FKF, as it were. Yeah. I, I think it should be streamlined. And I am happy with the caretaker committee. I know there's been a lot of uh, cries that, oh, these are not football people. We don't need football people to run football. We need proper governance, proper corporate governance to make sure that we have systems that run. Because without systems, for example, the last two years, mm -hmm. AFC Leopards, we have made huge strides in building a football team that can compete for the league and win the league. And I'm proud to say, last year I finished fourth behind three corporate clubs, Tasca, KCB, and uh, Bandari. Mm -hmm. If I had half of the money these clubs use to, back, uh, to run their leagues, uh, their teams, I could have won the league in the first league. But, but Dan, yes. let me ask you, why, why should we always be navel gazing? Uh, you know, fans should be the source all the way coming from FKF only. Why can't you diversify your, your portfolio, so to speak, in terms of, you know, revenue generation, that it doesn't really necessarily come from FKF, that if that money doesn't trickle down to you, then you're awfully inadequate to operate as a club. Could you, there are many partners, I would believe, that would want to associate with the FC Leopards. There are many, you know, uh, uh, clubs out there, there are many people who are fans and they want to subscribe, you know, uh, to FC Lo Leopards to get the merchandise, you know, to, to be the fan clubs. How then are you also using this opportunity to just think outside the box on how you can generate revenue to run the club? Uh, interesting question. And uh, I, I can assure you, first and foremost, before you can dive into all that, and make, maybe make some revenue out, out of that. Mm -hmm. People will always be looking at where you are on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what kind of football are you you're playing? For the last two years, I've focused on the team on the pitch. We've done a little in terms of uh, revenue generation out at the pitch and the rest. Yes. But I can tell you mm -hmm. for free, I have decided I have six months in the office. Yes. I am swapping that. For the next six months, we want not to build FC in the air, but we want to build FC on a physical infrastructure. It's unfortunate. We were incepted in 1964, mm -hmm. but we do not have a train, our own training ground. There's a day I remember my coach fighting with the, the former president of the federation because they clashed on a, on a training pitch uh, somewhere in Karen. Uh, Karibang Sharks were training from 7 to 9. We were training from 10 to midday. But they extended. By 10, they had not finished. And my coach, Patrick Osem, said, time is time. Uh, I think just went straight to the pitch and mm -hmm. told them to get out. And uh, yes, I am not here to wholly blame the Federation on our woes. Mm -hmm. The woes that we have now is that there has been money is owed to these clubs which has not been coming to make sure that critical functions in the club can actually run. What I decided, especially now that God has given me a second chance, mm -hmm. and I'm saying God has given me a second chance because there was, Shikanda must go by December. I could not have had the time to build the structure that I'm going to build in the next six months. We have been looking for certain issues to make sure that we can have our own training field we can have our own offices uh, where we will start from, and we are working hard so that come next month, we can all realize this and just focus on revenue generation. We have tried to build a team that we have given it to the technical bench and make sure I will tell them, whatever results they get, we must finish top three if not winning the league. And I'll tell our fans, don't write us off we are in this league to still compete. But as a leadership, 
who we are now having Thank you. six months, we want to put a physical infrastructure where we shall build the team from and make sure that this team can be, uh, this time can be a turning point in Kenyan football. Right, Dan, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed because all I hear is here yeah, you're looking for an office and you're looking for a training ground. Yes. I'm wondering then, how then do we continue to nurture also, also the, the youthful, young, young children that we have in this country who they are very passionate and they're impassioned, you know, on anything to do with football. You're not even talking about, you know, AFC Lopez or Football Academy. Right? You just want the running of the office and you just want the, the training ground. That should be the big vision, sir. The vision is this. First and foremost, first things first, it's unfortunate and maybe apologies to members of FC Leopards and maybe uh, football fraternity at large. Since 58 years ago, we don't have our training ground. Yes. We are trying to work our best to have somewhere where we can train. And if it were not for COVID for the last two years, we have actually lost a whole season because of COVID. Seriously, uh, challenges that we could neither do much mm -hmm. nor try and salvage one or two things. Mm -hmm. But what is in our program now, we want to get somewhere where we can, we can actually house the FC. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about, academy, yes, we have plants and uh, there's some land also. We, we've been chasing two parcels of land, one in Nairobi, one up country, but it all depends with us getting the, 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 the one in Nairobi and getting our training field, then getting the one in up country because uh, we want to go back to Mashinani where our base is mm -hmm. and actually build an academy. Thank you. All those two are in progress and I'm sure they will come to pass before my term expires in June next year. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Shikanda, the chairman of SC Lopez. Thank you for coming through this morning and fully articulating on what is happening on the football fraternity. You know, the current state of play. Uh, we have a caretaker committee who is uh, trying or which is trying to salvage the affairs of football in this country. We're still waiting and putting our eyes appealed on that to see how that really develops. But nonetheless, I want to thank you, sir, for uh, cordially discussing this morning on this particular matter. Right. I just want to promise before I take a short break. Yes, you're watching News Center, and right now, when we come back, we'll be heading to Meru, where Alan Ochanda is uh, standing by, and he will give us, you know, uh, an update of what is happening. Deputy President William Ruto is kicking off his two.